so but let's pray to the almighty let's pray to mahadev mahakali vahe guru lord ganesha for us to have their insights so that we can step in the beautiful world of magha nakshatra and uh, let's invoke their energies and let's seek their blessings and with om namah shivaya and vaheguru ji with their blessings let's begin your session so let's start and uh, just a quick refresh with you that um, your ascendant is capricorn and uh, what is ascendant in eastern horizon um, when you were born the zodiac that appeared was capricorn so the 10th house energy of the cosmic man's horoscope or in kal purush kundli the 10th house energy has come and sat in your first house now what's ascendant ascendant's got to do with your body your physicality the way you look and the way your personality is your intellect and your health the way you come across all these things are significant in the ascendant so your ascendant is ruled by lord saturn because capricorn sign and along with aquarius is ruled by lord saturn so what are the qualities of lord saturn saturn is extremely you can say diligent very powerful with working and very duty oriented very career oriented and this 10th this 10 number sign is the karma bhumi that's where you go out in the world and you perform your duty your karma and your uh, karmic uh, implication with the masses is also seen from the capricorn sign it's highly um judicious if it's well placed and it speaks of a person who's very law abiding and who's very dutiful towards their karmic obligations in the society so that's the personality and that's the you can say uh, intellect and the physicality is more to prone towards the saturn and even the skin color which you have Uh, you know because it rules uh, you can say the head region but it's also since it's your whole body so saturn also gives you the kind of height or the color or the way you look is thanks to the planet and of course if there are some aspects in your horoscope uh, i don't think there's any planet aspect in your ascendant so you're heavily ruled by lord saturn and um, the mahadasha Uh, which you are doing um is moon mahadasha it just began in april 2021 and is going to happily embrace you rule you till 2031 and in moon you're doing a antardasha of mars and the mars antardasha just began mid february and is going to be there till september so moon and mars right and where is your moon your moon conjoins the beautiful planet venus and it goes and sits in your eighth house right in the sign of leo okay now uh, do you recall your chart you do so we have the very very Uh, exotic and the very artistic and the very beautiful venus along with the moon now what's moon uh it's got multi multiplicity of uh, holdings like in a human moon controls the mind moon controls the way you feel the way you receive information from the universe and from the inmates of the universe and the way you respond to them Uh, is controlled by moon 
it reflects your emotions your state of mind your thinking processing your thinking pattern and of course what kind of energies of thought processes you attract is also your moon right because you're attracting other people they're also moon they also have their own minds and emotions so what kind of moons do you attract is also going to be based on where your moon uh, specifically is so your moon placement is in the very very beautiful constellation of magha which is ruled by lord ketu and it's happening in your eighth house now let's understand what's eighth house eighth house is house of transformation it's house of secrecy whenever we go secret or whenever we um Uh, transcend upon the secret zones were entering the eighth house so any service which could be moon related moon uh, of course we spoke the moon is the mind the emotions but moon is also the central government and the main government is seen by uh, sun lord surya in the celestial cabinet and moon is very much the central government so some work which is in secrecy which is related to the government is seen from this kind of a way okay and your mind is also deep in secrets is deeply transformed and it wants to excavate it wants to go dig 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 till you find the truth it wants to keep digging but now we have to discuss magha because um we can dwell and understand this energy more when we decode magha okay and when we are talking magha nakshatra magha is ruled by lord ketu and magha happens in the zodiac of leo now 0 degree to 13 degree 20 minutes of leo is magha okay and we and there are other two nakshatras which is purva falguni again 13 degree 20 minutes to 26 degree 40 minutes and then the remaining 3 degree 20 minutes happens in utra falguni right so these are the three constellations which fall in the zodiac sign of leo and your moon is of course in leo but since your moon is 11 degree 33 minutes it's very much falling in the constellation of magha now we know that what's magha magha is the lion and what's lion is the beautiful <laughs> head of the lion and it's also the first section of leo so uh, you know when you check um, in the galaxy you see in astronomy um the beautiful stars the clusters of cluster of stars which are forming this shape of a lion because all the constellations are based on animal symbols and animal shapes even the zodiacs so when you check on this cluster is looking like a lion and since it's the first section 0 degree to 13 degree 20 minutes it covers the face and the four uh, four arms of the lion right and it's also covering the heart region so um and usually uh, like we check the hair because it's the li- lion's head covers the mane so thick mop of hair you can see in the magha native and also there's something uh, interesting here that some people have hair related issues or hair woes So when the moon is in Magha which happens almost twice a month you can get go in for a hair trim or you can go for some hair uh, scalp treatment it accentuates it accentuates the hair growth so uh, this is a wonderful uh, luxurious hair you can see from the Magha native and also Magha is associated with the ancestors because it's ketu ruled so there's lot of ancestor worship and the magha people also like to have a very strong foundation so they are very family oriented they are very connected to their roots and they are always interested in knowing who's my lineage like the family tree the highest in the hierarchy 
who's there in the family they're very keen to know about that and of course genetic disorders we can see from uh, magha pickers of the ketu uh, rulership so uh, ketu will understand this further as well that ketu rules over the genetics and your dna chromosome all this is ketu ruled so besides the genetic disorders which could be prevalent in the magha um they have a happy disposition the health is good and now um the point um, is that the magha native is very tend to be towards the english gothic cemetery and the imagery the cemetery aspect reinforces the tamasic guna or the ancestral guna which is prevalent in the planet ketu okay and the ketu native also stands out from other people a lot because what happens is wherever in the chart your ketu goes uh, you very um, you've done lot of past life repeated karmic patterns so that particular house has your ketu and lot of things you've done of that house and in this house uh, you're really not keen and the vision is also blocked out till the karmic age of ketu is lifted you you can't even assess that house and you can't even take the best out of that house because of the uh, repeated energy which is going in many past lives in that particular house right so and where your rahu is that's the place where you want to explore where all your sensibilities and all your senses trees you apply and you want to completely find out about that point it's a very novice point and it's not something which you've done in your past life that's the uh, rahu point and the ketu point lots you have done in your past lives so it's the dance of the trance between rahu and ketu right and also like i told you that the magha is tend uh, it's tend to be towards the gothic cemetery and also the imagery so um the ketu individual or the magha individual has a very strong and a very independent and a very discriminatory mind and the exterior is very or the demeanor is very pleasant and it's very calm too okay and in the society they could have a very dominating presence and they also have this um deep understanding of the working of the society so when we speak about the some uh and you suppose there are some uh, like they go under cover and they don't speak or spell out their true identity but they know the deepest working of the society the people how to excavate the information you know it's like digging up it's like the uh, eighth house thing which is here that you're digging out information yet you're not revealing your identity right so the deep working of the society pattern is also understood in the magha nakshatra and magha basically um dwells or we can say that uh, there are three pillars on which magha stands one is routine two is meditation three is the creative process and now it's very uh, important for us to understand that why routine why is um routine such a significant pillar and then meditation and then the creative process so let's understand routine why routine so the magha native enjoys to follow routine now you yourself uh, you must be enjoying to follow a particular routine and everybody must be wondering that uh, why is he so routine oriented every day doing the same thing at the same point of time having this fixed pattern and why is the um, 
nature so fixed because we all know that the sign of leo is a fixed sign so the nature of the fixation or the um, yeah the fixation is coming from the fixed sign of leo right and you know there is heavy amount of inertia because the there is heavy amount of tamaguna which is being brought in by lord ketu so they will be because of the fixed sign and because of the tamasic guna of ketu there is resistance to change so it's very easy and it's very comfortable for the magha to follow a routine and to follow tradition now why tradition because leo is the king he is the king of the jungle the lion and even we speak about uh, the sun being the ruler of leo so sun in the celestial cabinet is the king right so the king also loves to follow tradition routine like we always see in the royalty that they follow a certain decorum and there is a certain protocol which they follow so all that traditional following and all the culture and following and respecting the ancestors all these qualities are there in the magha okay and all this is also recognized as a routine um so why and after following the routine and being in the repetitive routine process um are you there hi are you there i lost your video yes ma'am now it's yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so uh oh, keep little eye contact you're all the time looking down i'm here or i'm down <laughs> makhle was writing No, no, don't write. You might get a recording from me. Don't worry about oh, that. Oh, okay. Hmm. Because if you keep writing, then you uh, won't understand what I'm speaking. So you rather um, dwell in whatever is spoken, and I might uh, give you a recording. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so sure, we're no. yeah. So we are speaking about the fixed routine, which the Magha loves to follow, which probably you will love to follow. and people will be very surprised that why is he making so much fun and why is he so joyous about his routine because routines could be very boring usually for people but not for the magha because the magha gets his true libido from following the routine because uh, now what happens is that when they follow a routine they don't uh, have to scatter their mind in the outwardly things so they are not even affected by the outward things because they have a fixed routine they know what pattern to follow and they know know what they have to do and they also have this um predestined or preconceived um reactions which they know they will have and which they are also prepared for so the fixatedness and the routine which is followed gives the mind a complete disconnect from the outward world and the beauty is that they are inwardly having this uh creative processing and they are connecting with their own inwardness they connect with their own elevated superior self which is all achieved after you dwell within right i mm-hmm. are you getting it? so yes, all the outward changes could be very distracted and uh, for the magha so the magha you know whenever we overthink we are dissipating our vital forces so magha allows its libido to manifest or to process on a more ketu perspective and what's the ketu perspective ketu perspective is to interact on the astral plane and also ketu disconnects you from your senses and is going to connect you with your inner self and in any case when we understand that this is happening in the zodiac of leo and leo is heart the heart region 
so for the emotions you don't need your mind isn't it they say love is blind they want to shut your senses free and they want you to feel your emotions because the leo sign is about the emotions the heart uh, in the body part the heart goes to the leo it goes to the fifth house of leo so when they ask you shut the mind which is no rahu because this portion is rahu when the cosmic churning was happening swabhanu was one entity rahu ketu was one entity but the neck was severed by lord vishnu but the few drops of the exila or the immortality drink had already gone in swabhanu who was the asura and even after uh, the slaying or or the neck being slayed the neck becomes rahu and the lower body is ketu so all the senses the five senses which we have uh, including the touch smell seeing hearing tasting or all, all this goes in the head so what happens is that when now we speak about the meditativeness when we go in deep meditative state what do we do we shut the mind meditation is that you shut the mind shut the senses you know you deactivate the indriyas which are controlled by this section and you connect with your inward light the soul connect like we say that i'm soul connected to you that's the ketu connection that's the karmic connection and you connect with the one source which is the eternal white light the illuminatory source we connect with that isn't it